What do you see when you scroll through social media? For some, they see a world telling them that the way they look is wrong. And with coronavirus sending people worldwide into lockdown in early 2020, this has only gotten worse. Half of the world is now active on social, and it has changed how we judge the way we look. Our body image. With social media having such a large sway over a key part of our mental health, its lack of policing is shocking. And if it isn't fixed, this mental health issue may grow from crisis to epidemic. As of 2021, more than half of the world's population are active social media users, with 53 million users residing in the UK alone. Social media is a great tool for allowing us to feel more connected to the ones we love. However, this comes at a cost. Social media can fuel body image anxiety as the amount of people we compare our appearance with grows from the people we know in our communities to pretty much everyone in the virtual world. We end up creating this cycle for all of us where we're constantly comparing and constantly judging every single person on it. And when we're comparing, yes, we're normally making ourselves feel so much worse. When we're judging, that's also not very helpful for us as individuals to be internalizing those thoughts, to judging someone's appearance based on just a snapshot of what they look like and where they're at in that particular moment. With such a vast number of people using social media, the question is, can you trust what you see? Digitally altering images so that skin looks smoother and bodies look more ideal is contributing to people having very low self-esteem and leading them to developing mental health conditions such as body dysmorphic disorder, where a person worries about flaws in their appearance that other people don't even notice. If the images that they're constantly seeing in their feed are digitally altered images, people using lots of filters, then they can also get a skewed idea of, of what people's normal bodies actually look like in real life. There are lots of ideas of how we can help people know what they're seeing is reality and not digital trickery. In 2017, France introduced legislation that any commercial image that has been digitally altered must be labelled as an edited photograph. We found that most young people are aware the images they see online and in the media have been digitally enhanced, but that doesn't stop them aspiring to them anyway. So even when you know full well that that picture is filtered and she does not look like that in real life, or you know she's a celebrity, she's paying for personal trainers and nutritionists and whatever, even when you know that, it's still very hard to get your head around that because you know that the reason they're doing that and the reason they are changing their body is because there is this ideal body standard that people still aspire to. The only way to stop these images from being seen by people is for companies to stop making them. Luckily, some are, such as Dove, who told us, we have not been distorting our images for years and years on Dove. And that includes everything, spots, bruises, marks, flyaway hairs and lighting. We do not retouch anything. Similarly, the Advertising Standards Authority intervened in early 2021 to tell influencers not to use misleading beauty filters and ruled that filters should not be applied to social media adverts if they exaggerated the effect of the products. Unfortunately though, this isn't enough and company policies like that of Doves are still in the minority. We need more companies and advertisers to take this approach and consider the effects their edited images can have on consumers' mental health. When the platforms first emerged, no one expected social media sites like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to become the online juggernauts that we know today that allow people to communicate their thoughts and ideas across the globe. With this new far-reaching method of connecting with other people came the rise of the influencer a personal social media who can affect the decisions their audience makes due to their knowledge or relationship with a given topic. It has definitely changed the face of Instagram and, and how it's used. Uh, and it's gone from just being sort of a platform to share pictures with, with friends and family, like people you know in real life, to all of a sudden following the lives of essentially celebrities um, that are only known because of their Instagram fame. They can be a force for good, becoming a refuge for healthy people of various shapes and sizes who aren't given the representation they deserve in traditional media. Well, I'm a plus size model. Back in the day, you would never find someone like myself on a website where you're looking for clothes. But now younger people are able to access that. I think it's so important because it gives young girls a picture of different types of bodies, different types of people that they feel they can relate to. It takes away the pressure of us all looking like one particular person or one particular body type. When it comes to social media, it can be a really positive thing and it could be a tool that could be really positive when we're thinking about, you know, um, body image. But as with anything, it can also be negative as well. 
over the last year, we've seen more and more like expert nutritionists popping up on places like Instagram. And actually the only thing that's giving them any kind of credibility is that they have millions and millions of followers on Instagram and they probably have a blue tick. So then everyone takes what they're saying as totally gospel. But actually a lot of the messaging they're giving is extremely negative and extremely dangerous. Even hashtags that at first glance seem harmless can have a negative impact on someone's opinion of their body image. Fitspiration, for example, is a hashtag associated with content that reinforces the appearance ideals of thin and lean for women and lean and muscular for men, and often contains guilt-inducing messages, stigmatizes weight and body fat, and emphasizes dieting and restrictive eating. Particularly if you're looking at eating disorder hashtags, you then get inundated with diet culture and diet messaging. And for those people who maybe are in recovery or maybe struggling with an eating disorder, it just again fuels that idea that what they're doing is okay, that what they're doing is normal. I think social media is horrible for body image, particularly when I was growing up because it was more just seeing really ripped people, really sort of athletic guys, the big six packs, the big arms, the big chests. And these sort of accounts where it's preaching this was so easy to access and it is so pub it is so sort of promoted amongst those platforms that it's hard to avoid it. We spoke to representatives from social media platforms who assured us that they do have policies in place to police this kind of content and are running several campaigns on their platforms to champion positive body image. But users of the platform tell us that their experiences don't line up with the policies these companies have in place. I do not think social media companies do enough to protect people from body image harms, um, particularly because these influences keep, keep coming through and the amount of damage that they're causing. I think at the end of the day, the social media companies are giving these people a platform and they know exactly what they're doing, then they are responsible for the harm that's caused as a result of it um, and they need to be doing more to protect people. Social media is a direct source of imagery and messaging for brands and influencers to reach everyday people and is arguably more interwoven into most people's daily lives, especially during the pandemic, than more traditional media. Yet companies running these platforms are not putting in the appropriate amount of protection and policing to shield people from content that is having a negative impact on their mental health. Social media is out of control and something needs to be done at a government level to fix it. Here at the Women and Equalities Committee, we've been researching the body image crisis and the factors that are fueling it. We've only scratched the surface of the causes of this crisis with what we've covered in this video. This research has been carried out as part of our inquiry, Changing the Perfect Picture, in which we cover even more about what can be done to fix body image concerns in modern society. For a more in-depth look at our research, you can read our report summary available here. Or if you'd like to read our full report, you can at committees.parliament.uk. As part of our report, we've made 17 recommendations to government. And we are eager to hear the government's response, which, as a House of Commons committee, they are required to provide. <laughs>